in Pakistan for the second time. But this time, we're exploring the most beautiful locations this country has to offer. And I invited my audience to come with me. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. So last year, we visited some insanely beautiful spots here in Pakistan. However, we knew that there was more to see. So we headed back to see what other gems this country has to offer. So we flew from the capital city of Islamabad up to the north because that is where the stunning views and adventures are. So we touched down, got on the road, and headed to one of the most scary and amazing spots, Fairy Meadows. We're going on death road of Pakistan. How are we feeling? Nervous. Let's do it. Now I've been on the Fairy Meadows death road before, but I had new friends with me, so I just had to show them how scary this road truly is. However, I never could have anticipated this. Head to head with another driver coming the opposite way, forcing us to back up. And as we were backing up, look how close we come to the edge. That is literally mere inches. Wow, life flashing before my eyes. But luckily the road didn't give out. We kept backing up and we were able to pass him on the inside. <laughs> Super scary, but an exhilarating experience, driving on a road that is simply cut out from the side of a mountain. Cyrus, to be honest, how was that? My hands hurt. Where's your hands? Where's your hands? I'll <laughs> <laughs> I'll never do it again. How bad was it out of 10? Like 20. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was wild. My hands are so black. That was a crazy ride. So after gripping on for dear life, we were able to enjoy the fruits of that deadly ride. This is the glacier leading up to the ninth highest mountain in the world, Nanga Parbat, sitting at 8,126 meters. No matter where you are along the trails of Fairy Meadows, there are several views, and ultimately the best view which can be seen from anywhere is the view of the mountain itself. Oh, chicken. Chicken. <laughs> Did you hear him? He goes, chicken, chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that is a wrap on the stunning fairy meadows overlooking Nanga Parbat. The next morning, we woke up in this very scenic location and headed towards the, let's say, infamous Husseini Bridge. Oh my god! Jordan, I hate zip lines, but I hate zip lines, but I'll do this. I'm one. totally doing it. <laughs> I don't really love zip lines, but this looks so good. Look at that backdrop. This is like unbeatable. So normally I think zip lines are a pretty lame activity, often placed in areas with nothing else to do. However, this one looks super sketchy, which adds to the exhilaration factor and also had a stunning backdrop. But wow, this dismount, okay, definitely had me scared. I then proceeded to get reprimanded for not wearing a helmet. However, they didn't give me one in the first place, so I'm not sure what was going on. But then the guy in the black hat changed his tune, gave me the double thumbs up, and said I was very strong for not wearing a helmet. Oh, I'm very strong for no helmet. Let's go. So last year I was here and I got in trouble for doing chin ups off the side of this bridge. But then this year they saw it online. They said, okay, no, that was kind of cool. So you can guys, you can go out there and do it again. <laughs> Security is the best here. So professionals only, right? Yeah. You're hanging on the bridge or shaking the bridge, not allowed. Not allowed, yeah. Yeah, but sometimes there are some professionals mm. who can do it again. Okay. It's not allowed. Special yeah. special permission. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so after I was granted my special permission, I proceeded to hang off the bridge for no good reason at all. I, oh. oh my God! I, <laughs> After looking at the footage here, it doesn't look that high or scary. However, if I did fall from there, it would be a certain death. So after the shenanigans at Husseini Bridge, we packed up and headed over to Atabad Lake. The story of Atabad Lake is super unique because there used to be a city under there until a massive landslide hit the valley in 2010 and what remains of the city is a beautiful lake. So as a few of us were enjoying the momentary thrill of sitting on the edge of a cliff, I decided to ask one of the members of our group why he came to Pakistan. Why did you decide to come to Pakistan? I was longing for an adventure. I haven't been doing anything crazy since the pandemic. And uh, I saw that you offered a trip and that's why I'm here, bro. In a nutshell, Pakistan is exactly that. A unique and adventurous place far outside the comforts of our day-to-day -day living. Which brings us to our next adventure, Rakaposhi Base Camp Trek. All right, today officially begins the part of the trip I haven't experienced before. So we are beginning the rest of the trip with the Rakaposhi Base Camp 
hike. We're gonna camp up there, come back down tomorrow, and then have a head over to Scardu. I'm excited for the rest of this trip because it's gonna be completely new to my eyes. Let's get into it. made it to our accommodation for the night and it's camping and the place is called Hakapun and it's just below it's like halfway to Rakaposhi base camp we can't stay up at Rakaposhi because it's apparently wet so we're gonna camp here and we're gonna zip up and come back down but this is just so stunning here so so stunning oh, cheers, brother. So after a tea break and lunch, we headed back onto the dusty trail for another couple hours until we got our first view of Rakaposhi. Ooh, look at that! I was looking at my feet the whole hike, and then we looked up, and we all saw Rakaposhi all once. It was epic. Rakaposhi is 7,788 meters high and has a stunning glacier coming at the bottom. Come look! Ooh. Holy crap! It's <laughs> crazy, right? It's unbelievable! This stunning trail alongside the glacier went by super quick as we made it to base camp. Ooh. Made it to Rakaposhi base camp. And it looks like there's some other people here in the community camping site. Even though it's a little damp, we've got some people like in a little drum circle. So this looks fun. Let's check it out. No better way to celebrate than having a dance party. It's a dance party. They just invited us over and started playing music for us. They're all from Gilgit here on vacation. What an unexpected, unbelievable surprise waiting for us at base camp. It's those little surprises that make these trips so, so sweet. So after a dance party and a little tobogganing, it was time to head back down the mountain to make it to our campsite where we could watch sunset and have dinner. Great. I mean, look at that campsite. Is that not the most aesthetic thing you've ever seen? And so after a big day of trekking, we all tucked in for one last big dinner before heading to bed. All right, I'm in my tent. We hiked 27,000 steps, 19 kilometers today. I'm beat. Time to say goodnight, and we'll see you tomorrow when we trek back down from the mountain. Best sleep ever. I guy slept nine and a half hours. Oh, let's take a look. Oh, yeah. So after that legendary sleep, we headed back down the mountain and embarked upon a four and a half hour journey from Hunza all the way to Skardu. After we culminated this huge travel journey, we ended up in a spot called the Yosai National Park. So we made it to Diosai National Park and it's a really high area of Pakistan, 4,000 meters high and it's sort of like rolling hills with snow up here, it's pretty cool. Yeah, apparently there's bears and marmots and stuff but we found the real entertainment and that is a vehicle got stuck and watching them trying to get it out is, is amazing. We're trying to help but it's really like you just need a tractor and straps to pull this thing out but it's almost hopeless. In comes the straps. Oh, no. <laughs> and then here comes the best part. Stop, 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 stop. Our friend Muhammad thought he could get the car unstuck, so he's gonna show us. Let me teach this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, yes! You got it, Muhammad, keep it going! The jumping didn't seem to work, so he got in the driver's seat. With one big left turn of the wheel, here it goes. Three! One guy was pushing forward, the other guy was pushing back, an absolute disaster. Hmm. Well, I guess the old turning of the wheel trick didn't work this time. Well done, Muhammad! When countries come together, great things can happen. And we're about to witness that right now. 
We've got a new car. So they brought in another car, had some more mishaps, and unfortunately, that one got stuck too. The other one's stuck! We ended up getting distracted by the snow, but after a while we noticed they managed to get it out. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Mohammed, for all the help! <laughs> but you told him! I know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> We're playing the rabbit run. I run across and they get to all throw snowballs at me. So here. Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm so lightheaded. Yeah, I'm up. 4,000 meters. Let's make Lola look far! You're running your way! Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. Alright, after we'd spent some time in the high altitude in the snow, throwing plenty of snowballs at each other, it was time to head back down. This would end today's adventure, and tomorrow we prepared ourselves for the greatest hike of the trip, Marser Rock. Today's hike is up to Marsur Rock, and I've been looking forward to this hike for a while because it looks like the Trolltunga Rock in Norway, although I think this is a lot higher. It's 3,600 meters above sea level, and then we started the hike around 22, 23. Let's continue. Today we begin the trek that I'm very excited about. I've never seen this location ever before online, and it looks amazing. And as we were along the trail, I decided to ask one of my friends what he thinks about Pakistan. All right, I love Pakistan so much and I keep saying it, but I want to hear from someone else on the trip. So I've got Mason here. We're going to ask him what he thinks of Pakistan so far. Like everywhere you go, there's a different landscape and a different thing. And what about like culturally? I mean, it's different, but people are really like just happy to show you and take you into the differences. Like there's, there's nothing that's been like, oh my God, this annoys me so much. You know, the sure times don't really exist and people will tell you different things, but nobody's out to get you in any way. Everybody's just like, they want to help and they're so eager to help. Sometimes it gets confused, but really it's just like people just want to like, so then, show you around. So then that begs the question, safe or unsafe? Safe. Very safe. Speaking as a, as a male in a group. Yeah. Very safe. Haven't felt unsafe at all. Minus the cliffs we go on. Yeah, minus the cliffs and the planes and the jeeps. <laughs> like all that stuff. The danger is like, is like the beauty. I couldn't have said it better myself. Expeditions, a little dangerous. Like that bridge. Yeah. Bridge, cliffs, airplane to the Himalayas, and jeep ride. I, I think that's one of the cool things is like people just have a different standard of life to it. They're used to it. So you get to like experience their comfortable level of danger. In the West, we're like, we have roads, we have speed limits and stuff. Here you just get like a different way of going through life because they have a different thing of danger that they're cool with. It's true. Oh God, the rain's coming in hot. And right after this little conversation, the clouds opened up. So we ran towards the cave for protection. Go, go, go. Ah. There's the cave. There's the cave. So we made it to the Cave of Protection where we filled our time with some song and dance. Oh, Han! Han! Oh. Oh. After that riveting dance, we decided to try our hand at some acapella. It is the same, what are you talking about? <laughs> Well, I would say that was a screaming success. Lorena stopped. We resume the trek. Come. Come, go, 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 go. Needless to say, we're all very excited to begin the hike again, as that was an abomination of song and dance inside that cave. Four hours now, including that wait for the rain. The views are getting really good. Rain has stopped. This is the hardest hike of the trip by far. It's a grind. Oh, so sick. Here we are on our last stretch towards the finale and the views are starting to get impeccable. We made it to Marsupial Rock. There it is. Sheesh! Hey, that. Worth it or what? Yeah, 100%. So wild. pretty. Finish. Everything the light touches Ooh, is yours. <laughs> it's the circle of life. It's, it's 
now past five o'clock and that is official. That is the best hike in Pakistan I've ever done. Marsar Rock, a mission to get here. A couple more days left of this trip, time to go back down. So we began the four hour trek back down the mountain and luckily the sky lit up and gave us a beautiful sunset light show. The next day as we were driving along the road, we noticed some locals panning for gold on the riverbed. So of course we had to go and check it out. The process of panning for gold is a super meticulous one and the pieces of gold are extremely tiny. As you can see right there, a bit of gold dust. So we asked this guy if we could buy a little bit. Well, there it is, you just bought gold that was freshly panned out of the Indus, Indus River. River. That's yeah. insane. <laughs> That's so awesome. I can't wait to see that like on a piece of jewelry. Yeah. It's a random. So, it. so sick. These nomadic families live alongside the river in tents. They sell what they make to the local pawn shops in order to provide for their families. As we continued to drive through Skardu, we noticed another random encounter, a polo game happening in the middle of the town. Super random, we stumbled on a live polo game. Polo in Skardu, I can't believe it, it's amazing. So it turns out that polo is actually quite a big sport here in Pakistan. I took a liking to the blue team, so I decided to bet my friend Johan 1,000 rupees that the blue team would win. You think you're gonna win that bet? You're dreaming. I don't know, I don't know. Go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Oh! Blue's looking good, but then... No! Oh! His family members are Bro, probably here. Yo, why are you so happy? <laughs> I might be winning now. <laughs> so the game was pretty even and back and forth up until the blue guy caught the ball and threw it in. Oh, handball! Oh! Oh! No way! You can do that! Oh! Wow. The oh, refs is allowed? The refs did not I'll take it. it, I'll take it. I bet you had a thousand no, rupees. No, 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 no. Blue is four to two, baby. Yes. This guy owes him a thousand yes, that's right. rupees. We, nice betting with you. Appreciate it. Never go against blue. Let's go! That's a polo money. Now, while it was amazing to win that bet, something even better was happening. The crowd was getting fired up, and a dance party slowly started to form in the middle of the pitch. So, of course, we naturally had to go and join. <laughs> And then after it was all over, a few people wanted to know where I got my insane Pakistani dance moves. <laughs> that has to be one of the most random experiences of my life. We stumbled across this polo game, and then we ended up dancing in the middle of the game. Pakistan, come on. Unreal. Unreal. Wow, Pakistan truly has surprises around every corner. And speaking of surprises... Look what we stumbled across. Wow. It's like heaven. We were just driving down the road, and then saw this. Little pond. It's unbelievable. Pakistan. And this brings us to the last spot on our Pakistan trip the Skardu Valley. Filled with sand dunes and lakes, it's simply beautiful. We enjoyed our final sunset, swimming together, surrounded by one of the world's most beautiful mountain ranges, the Khorakam Valley. Untouched beauty and rarely seen online, this should definitely be a bucket list item for any backpacker and traveler out there. So here's the last day of our Pakistan trip, we woke up, beautiful view of the Skardu Valley. And that's it for the Pakistan trip. Words can barely express how amazing this place is. Between the people being so nice, the landscapes that are untouched, no one's really experienced it, never seen these places really before online. It just feels like you're really exploring and that's sort of what travel is about, is exploring new places. When you go to places that have just been time and time again showing up online, it kind of feels like you're doing something a bit repetitive, but here it's like, it kind of feels like raw exploration and that you're doing something very unique. And it, cause it really is. This is the world's highest mountains in, and it's hard. It's, I mean, some of the 
some of the journeys here are hard to do because they're so like untouched and the tourism is not very developed here. So it is rewarding to visit these places and highly recommend it. If you do it, I would consider doing a group trip because it's just, it could be hard sometimes and it's, it's nice to share these moments in a group. So just send me a DM if you need, or a comment if you need some information about that. Hope you enjoyed the, the video. See you in the next video, bye.